All right, boys. Episode 25 of The Milk Bucket. That's just remembering, man. I'm so proud. Well, because I'm proud of this fucking episode. We're 25 episodes in, which means we've been doing this for 25 weeks without missing a single week. <laughs> we say that I mean, missed a week. <laughs> only only two weeks missed, so it's not that. Wait, bad. did we miss two weeks? Yeah, one with Chris and one where we you, when you first missed it, uh, moved here. Ah, uh, fuck yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as of next week, it'll be six months of episodes. How crazy is that, bro? Really? We should do something next week. Maybe let's have like we can like call someone or we can like get some of the buckets on it. Who knows? Like, um, should we do a Q and A? We haven't done Q and A in a long time. Let's do a Q and A. That'd be sick. Hey boys, fucking listen out next week on the Instagram. We'll put a Q and A thing. Make sure yes, you're following the Instagram. One hundred. Fucking keen as boys. Anyway, Bass, I had this thing happen right yeah. this week. Right, it was so annoying. I broke my phone. Right. Oh fuck. I was sitting in the toilet, vigorously masturbating the hand time, Of course. I mean, okay. What, yeah. what else can happen? Yeah, fair right? enough. <laughs> and the 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 power of the arc hit my phone, knocked it out of my hand, the and it cracked. Oh shit, bro. That's Bro, fuck. it cracked. You should have had a puppy case on if you're asking me. Wait, a puppy? Yeah. Like a little like retriever dog to catch the phone as it falls. Nah, bro, I mean, bro, I'm not into dog stuff. What are nah, you talking bro, about? <laughs> no, nah, bro, I'm talking about at puppy this. What's that? It's the fucking latest and greatest in the phone case market. No way. What, are they, what do they do? Like, if you what? haven't heard of them, go check out at puppy this, man. They're on Instagram. They fucking, they do the best quality phone cases in the market. Do they have like, cool pictures and stuff like that? You wouldn't believe it, because they do. Wait, what about, <laughs> surely no biodegradable options? There's no way. You wouldn't believe it. There what? are biodegradable no, options. you're capping right now. There's no fucking way. Bazaar talking such shit right now. This is a typical story. Yo, no, I'm not no even way. joking. Go to puppythis.com. Okay, I know for a fact, you're lying to me if you say this. Yeah? Do they have a milk bucket collab case right now? Oh like, my God, you wouldn't believe it, bro. No, they do. Yo, they man, do. You're talking such shit right now. The only way that would make this better is there's some way to get 10% off for some reason. There's no way. Ah, there is way. No, press there the isn't. Link in the, <laughs> press the first link in the bio. <laughs> there is a link to get 10% off any case at Puppy This, even the milk bucket case exclusive collaboration. Well, good. I guess hit them up, boys. I wish I learned about it before, but I'll get it. I'll get it next time. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, no more crack over. cases for me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's get into the show. <laughs> oh man, dude! I had the fucking funniest experience the other day. Yeah, what happened? Well, this is the thing. You know how every single restaurant is doing plant based this, plant based that. Yeah, yeah. Firstly, I mean, what the fuck are your thoughts on plant based? It's just call yourself a vegan and have the shame. When the fuck did it be okay for you to make? mushroom a thing like make mushroom tacos the oh, fuck yeah, is mu- that pisses me off why are you even comparing it to fucking chicken do you, do you know what, what the fuck is that it's like when people pretend like ladyboy head is the same as girl head what who the it's fuck like, has ever compared it's a, that you it's what? a it's a <laughs> What? That's such an unrelatable. <laughs> no, it's a fake product. When someone shows me a fucking nice 300 gram wagyu beef versus a beet with a T, suck your mother, you fucking cunt. I hope you die in a car crash. Don't give me this bullshit, bro. Don't give me, oh, it's it's fake chicken. Fake chicken. It's fake not chicken. Chi- what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Why are you pretending it's chicken? It's fake chicken. It's in the name, cunt. Yeah, well, that's the thing, man. Like, when did beet become like the subject of a meal? Or fucking, this is a good one, fucking browned pumpkin. The fuck does that mean? Exactly. Is that just like racism towards a certain sect of pumpkins? What's going on there? (laughs) Well, it's supposed to be like charred with it. And they even had like one of those blow torches, those creme brulee ones, and they charred it in front of you. It's like, brother, it's still pumpkin. It's still something that white chicks like in cappuccinos. I don't think it's the fucking star of a dish. Yeah, it's like when did when did people start going to Subway and just say, yeah, uh, can I go have Italian herbs and cheese? Oh yeah, you know salt and pepper. Uh, I'll, no, I'll just get. Don't worry about the meat. Don't worry about the cheese. I'll just get some lettuce, tomato. Thanks. Yeah, bro, what are you fucking yeah. doing? You're literally ordering toppings. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing here? It's literally rabbit food. Yeah. With some fucking some fucking fire on top of the it. The cap it makes is it real. Bro. The cap is real. Oh man. Like what the fuck is that about? Why why are people pretending like we give a fuck about your shit meal? You know what I'm saying? The thing is I have ordered them when they're on sale. Cause those are the type of things that will go on sale and, and then I would think, you know, I'll add a bit of chicken to it and then it'll fucking it'll be a proper meal. Yeah, but you're the kind of guy who would buy anything on sale. This is You're actually- the kind of guy who if they were <laughs> offering free rim jobs from a Woman <laughs> for fifty percent off, you'd be like, I mean, it's a sale. It's Imagine a good deal. If offering rim jobs, just like <laughs> the concept of selling rim jobs. Bro, right, it happens. <laughs> I saw you do it the other day. You walked into that Thai massage parlor, walked out a happy man. <laughs> 
just imagining a fucking sign that says like fucking hand job ten dollars, <laughs> fucking blow job twenty dollars, and just goes up until rim job is like fucking two hundred dollars. Where do you think rim job is placed? Is priced. <laughs> <laughs> like in, if hand job is twenty and blow job is fifty, sex is a hundred. Where is rim job? It's after sex, surely. What? I would say it's You're before. You're not gonna nut from rim job. It's before anal. No, no, but I think you tack it on. It's an extra. It's like avocado. <laughs> <laughs> it's like guacamole. <laughs> <laughs> Eight dollars more get a side. <laughs> you gotta pay a little bit more. You get you get a blow job with a bit of rimming in it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so funny. It's like, oh yeah, do you want the deluxe airbag feature and a rim job? Yeah, no, it's fine. It's a good package we've got. <laughs> it's, like, it's like getting a fucking what is it called? Um, what, what are those um windows at the top top of your car sun, called? Sun, yeah, like yeah. getting a sunroof in your car. You pay an extra five grand and you get some sunlight in there. Get some natural light in there occasionally. Yeah. You pay an extra fucking 20 bucks and you get a natural bidet option. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> a natural bidet. <laughs> I mean, you're definitely that guy though. You'll buy anything on sale. Walking through Coles is the most frustrating thing. Coles is a supermarket for our uh, overseas listeners. Yeah. Walking through a supermarket with Basil is the most frustrating thing because he'll see anything. He'll see baby formula 5% off and be like, oh, this is a great deal. Yeah. And just start looking at it. It's like a five hour ordeal. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You know what was the worst um, The worst impulse buy that I bought that I've still got in my cupboard, which I haven't ate yet? What? Um, crocodile jerky, <laughs> which was on sale from like $10 to $1. And I thought it was $1. So it's got to be shit. But I was like, I'm not going to just buy one. I'll buy two. Because on the off chance that it's good, I want to have more because this is going to sell. This is yeah, going to sell yeah, quick. Yeah. I got it. It was the driest fucking, it tasted like grass. It was so shit. I mean, Baz, you're buying a dry dish already that's now so, so expired. So far expired. Yeah, yeah. This is a dish that people salted their meat so it could last fucking, you know, year voyages on ships. Yeah. So imagine how expired it has to be for that. To, it's like having a canned food that expired. You yeah, bought it so yeah, bad yeah. that it got so expired to the point it was ninety percent off. <laughs> Bro, yeah. at that point, it's literally just a crocodile scale, mate. Well, okay, I'll tell you why I think I love buying shit on sale. It stems from the fact that I love trying new things. And when there's so so, if I've I've never needed to give myself an excuse to try something new. And then when there's a big reason to buy it, like it's on half price, then there's nothing stopping me. Then that's fucking like I'm gonna go get it. How far would a deal like go? Like, let's say there was a, a transvestite at a oh trucker god. stop. Oh my god! You know, with herpes on the mouth, <laughs> but it was seventy percent off Tuesdays. <laughs> yeah. How much more would that make you want to do? Oh, uh, it doesn't matter. It would a little. I'll, yeah, I'll I know tell- it doesn't matter because you would have done it anyway. But well, still, it would have been a good incentive. I think that when the sales on services, it actually is less appealing. Like if your haircut saying, like if your barber is saying, yeah, half price. Or like a random barber says half price haircuts today only. I don't know if it's as appealing as when there's like a, a drink where you like a Coca-Cola is a Coca-Cola. If it's half price, you're getting the same product. But you know what the issue you have? Cause I get, I get that. Like I get if you go to Woolworths and they've got the fucking, like you're only going to buy the one which has the dollar. Mm. So essentially mm. for people who don't know, in Australia, we've With got chocolates. like Woolworths and Coles, both of the supermarkets, the big ones. They'll essentially have every week, one of the styles of fucking chocolates would be on or sale. Mars. So yeah, so it's either all the Cadbury range or like the Mars Twix fucking- That's not that's not Cadbury, that's the Mars. No, that's what I'm saying, Mars Twix. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Those ones, and it'll one of them will be a dollar and the other ones will be like $2.20. Yeah. So you're, of course, you're only gonna buy the one that's a dollar. Exactly, you find which one you want. <laughs> but they're never at risk of being expired. Baz will buy a fucking salad that's so expired that it's 90% off. No, it expires And it's tomorrow. like, it's gonna be soggy and gross. And he's pretending like it's a good salad. Baz is the biggest cap you'll ever meet. He'll buy something and he'll convince himself that this has to be good because he bought it. And so therefore he'll pretend. Well, he'll this munch thing, through bro. fucking my, like piles of mold yeah. and like <laughs> bugs crawling. And he's like, no, firstly, it's great, it's a great dish. Firstly, I'm not a picky eater. It's really hard for me to eat something and not enjoy it. Secondly, what about ass? <laughs> I mean that same same yeah. rule applies, <laughs> but, but but I, I also don't believe in best by dates, like you know, sorry, best before dates, because I feel like they're always trying to cover themselves. So even if it technically expires on the tenth, they'll say best before the sixth. So no, if you if you buy it right. on the fifth, you actually have five days to eat it. You're not, not going to die, day. but it's about the freshness. If you buy cookies that have baked three days ago, they're going to be hard now. Yeah, but that's the thing. If you There's buy something salad, you can do it's it not going to be crisp. Yeah, but I, I don't know if I'm eating it for the crispiness. I'm eating it for the healthiness. So I can have a Mars bar and feel good about it. <laughs> God. You know, like- Bro, talking about fucking food, what, what do you think about the concept of eating food off 
a, a like a girl. You know what I mean? A partner. Or a, I've or done. A chick. I've done whipped cream. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Does that count? Yeah, that counts. Like whipped cream. I've done a lot of that shit. After a while, you're kind of like, this isn't. This is. It's not as fun as you would expect. It's such a novelty. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like I didn't need. I was going to do it anyway. I didn't, I didn't need you, the food there. Part of yeah, exactly. Part of you is initially thinking like, oh yeah, I get to lick some tit. And it's like, after all, you're like, yeah, I was going to do that. Anyway. I was going to do, do it anyway. Like, like, this hasn't really changed I don't the think game. the fucking whipped cream was the thing that swung <laughs> the girl's opinion about it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Actually, speaking about sales, like we were going about before, like, you know, things on sale, something that is actually, a, I want to call this the large number fallacy. And fallacy means just something that, something that's incorrect and commonly Fake thought news. of. Yeah, exactly. Like I actually CNN. think that- People will impulse buy things that are expensive, like thousands of dollars, and and think of it as not that re- unreasonable. Versus, like, say, think about it this way: if you're going to buy a pair of headphones, you'll drop two hundred fifty dollars on on Apple AirPods and just not even think about it. But then, if you're going to spend sixty five dollars on a pair of wide earphones, suddenly it feels like a lot of money because yeah, sixty five dollars is is something you can factor in. You can think, okay, that's going to be three hours of work for me. Like, that's a lot of time. But then suddenly two hundred and fifty dollars doesn't feel like that. It's too big for you to comprehend. No, nah, I don't I don't think it's that. I think it's in comparison to other things on the market. So if you're buying if you're buying good Bluetooth headphones, two hundred and fifty dollars is not that much. Because you see the mad Bose ones that cost a, like a rack or something like that. Yeah. Shitty wired headphones, when you're looking at the fucking skull candy, you're like, yo, is this actually much better than the fucking bullshit I get at Coles? You know what I mean? It's like a dodgy wired headphone in a box. You're right. It does feel like the more expensive zone but it's significantly cheaper and if it's even comparable to the to the 250 dollar pair which arguably 250 dollars for a wireless earphones is a really cheap pair of wild wireless earphones so i mean i yeah, don't yeah. i don't even know if the skull candies are worst worst quality if they're wired so, I but it, so, it right. feels like it's a lot more expensive when it's 65 dollars. yeah but it's the same thing like you'd spend a hundred grand on a beamer without like being that fucking phased Whereas obviously if you had a hundred grand, you know what I mean? Yeah. But like but you would you would never spend thirty grand on a Suzuki Swift. True. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, it's about value. It's about like also the comparative range. Like what what are you actually buying in this case? You know what I'm saying? Like I think it's it's so In Australia, you'd spend two hundred dollars on a hooker. In Thailand, you're dreaming, mate. They're dreaming. If it's not fucking twenty dollars, <laughs> then you can see it, mate. What are you talking about? You know what I mean? It is funny how <laughs> that is just kind of true. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny how different countries pussy is worth less. Yeah, and it's like and sorry, it, the exchange exchange rate, uh, darling. It's it's not as it's not as high right now. You know right. I mean? But it's it's also it's it's literally supply and demand. Do you reckon there's hedged brothels? There's what hedged brothels? Hedged brothels. Yeah. Brothels. How does that work? So like international currencies don't sway it. It's always like sixty baht or whatever that's equivalent of. Oh, so it doesn't matter where in the world you go. But then I feel like it's just going to be underpriced in Australia and overpriced in fucking Thailand. Yeah, you don't want that. You want it the other way around. You want to go overseas and have some fun. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Basil had some fun. I think I think it is it is interesting in fucking in Thailand where the supply and demand is so obviously clear because it's just hookers standing outside just grabbing your nuts as you walk past. Right? How funny is that? Like, to, like you know, not to disparage fucking people have gone through shit. We've spoke about this a bunch, but women talk about like rape culture in Australia, right? You always hear about that stuff. Mm-hmm. Bruv, there is legit rape culture in Thailand against fucking straight white males. Not straight white males, just straight males. Yeah. Because we're walking Tourist past- Tourist males. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're walking past and it's the most blatant sexual assault you'll ever feel. It's literally a cop. And they literally just grab your nuts. And it's not even like- And, it, and we're kind of complimented. We don't, we're fucking- At the start. We're not gonna mind. At the start, bro. Two days in, you're like, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Do I want to deal with this? It's so annoying. Like after what? Because you're like, are oh, they trying to steal my phone? Like, why do they keep fucking grabbing my ass and shit, bro? You know, it is kind of cute when you realize that they're not trying to steal your phone. Like they they're actually just they they've got a living. You know, they've got a fucking a job that they're just trying to do, and it's not that fucking crazy. Yeah, I cannot fucking oh, wait, open crack this. that into the crack bro, that into the mic, bro. Yeah. Ooh, that sounded saucy, bro. Did it, did it come up on the mic? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, that crack fucking high fidelity, dog. Third beer for the boys. For the, <laughs> for the day, boys. Oh, we've been getting buzzed. What time is it? Fucking two o'clock. <laughs> hey, it's fucking, I don't know, five o'clock somewhere, according <laughs> to white women. It's five o'clock in New Zealand. This will be my new favorite saving. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be cracking out the chili bin. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, what the fuck? Have you heard the term chur? What? Chur. You're saying words now? True. Yeah. Have you heard the word? Uh? C-H-U-R. True. 
If we have any Kiwi listeners, I'm sure we do. Can you guys please explain to us what the fuck true means? Because my workplace is like fucking 40% New Zealanders. For those who don't know, in Australia, there's, you, a, there's a lot of Kiwis in Australia. And I, uh, to be fair, I actually really like the Kiwi accent, thankfully. Um, but what the fuck does true mean? I, I, there's so much Kiwi slang that I just... It's just another made up word by made up people. A made up people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there is a reason why we carved out the thing and pushed them to see. That's all I'm saying. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> fucking I, rivalry is real, dog. Now that I opened this beer and it's like kind of it's fresh at the stage, it really makes me think about tornado chugging. I really oh, want to. Yeah. What the fuck happened to tornado? Talk about chugging? something else that died. Yeah, Jesus Christ, we've had a few deaths this can year. Can you guys right? fucking? Can you guys fucking tell us on your for you pages in your normal life has tornado chugging just completely gone? It was everything that everyone did three months ago. And then now it's just fucking, I haven't seen a tornado chug in fucking years. It's What's like going on? It. I haven't heard the Buster challenge in a while, which makes me a bit sad. What was your favorite TikTok trend? I really like the Bugs Bunny one. We, oh, with the- um, like, no, 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 Bugs Bunny. Is that so, what they had the socks on? No, it was the one where they were lying down straight, like lying down flat. And then at the very end, they would slide their knees up and you just see their ass sticking up behind them. Uh, and I'm like, oh, this is worth the wait. Yeah, that was a pretty Although good the one. Big Bank one was pretty good when it was worth it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Bro, I legitimately think that we should do a, uh, a tier list on we this. We should do or, the Big Bank. March, March. Should we do Milk Bucket Big Bank Challenge? <laughs> What's the Big Bank? Who do you reckon's got the fattest ass in the group? <laughs> <laughs> Who do you reckon's got the most cheeks in the group, bro? Oh, man. <laughs> I'm going to say probably Aaron. You reckon? Or you. No, he's too e- tall either, and skinny. Yeah, either, probably you, actually. Hey. You're not that skinny, but he's too tall for that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Is there a correlation with like, Height and, and booty. <laughs> <laughs> no, you look at Latinas, bro. Like the, the Latin like average height is like tiny. five, six or something. They're tiny. But they got the fattest asses, bro. Yeah, it, I mean- That it, shit's it does, amazing, dog. It does suck. I that, love the Brazilian build. Yeah, I mean, which one would you prefer? Like a girl who's worked out for a booty or just a natural booty? It's kind of tough. Well, you want ass either way, bro. But the thing is, you don't want an ass that's just pure muscle. Yeah, that's, that's what I was about it's to say. It's not good, bro. Yeah, but I mean, I haven't really felt an ass that's pure, pure muscle. Yeah, I know, neither have I. But like, there, there is something to having a bit of fucking fat in the trunk. You know what I mean? Like, you look at all the chicks who have the like twerky asses. You gotta have that's some- That's not muscle. You gotta have some fucking jiggle in there. Yeah, exactly. You know, it can't all be fucking- You wanna be able to squeeze it and not hurt your hands. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? You want it to be like bro. a stress ball. I mean- Bro, imagine being a girl and just knowing <laughs> that like, your ass is a stress ball for your man. <laughs> like, like if you get your ass squeezed, it will make his day better. But you just have to walk around knowing like, oh God, when's it going? But how funny is it the reaction between girls and guys? Like, so you'll grab your girl's ass and she'll be like, oh my God, babe, you know, stop. But if she grabs your ass, you're like, oh fuck. Like jumping up and shit. Like, hey it bitch, feels, get away from me, bro. It feels gay. <laughs> it feels gay when you get groped by your own girl. It's like, yo, stop that shit, bro. Do you, I mean, do you feel the same? Yeah. It's a little bit like, like yo, uh, this is no, not how it is. Stop it. <laughs> this is like you adding more than me. <laughs> <laughs> I do not consent to that, you fucking rapist, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing we were talking about Thailand. Like, imagine if the West was like that with girls. Imagine if they walked down the street, they'd actually just get their fucking pussy grabbed. Like Donald Trump's just on every corner. Yeah, I mean, I do think it's like that in some co- in some countries. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't think it's Australia, mate. That being said, I do think that they can get away with it because they know that guys are going to be okay with it, relatively yeah. compared to girls. Like guys aren't going to kick a stink about it. We're not going to report them. What's hilarious? Also, there is a factor. I guess you know we're being insensitive in the fact that like we're not worried about a little Thai girl fucking raping us, and they know that. Yeah, they know. Whereas, like a yeah. girl, if a big fucking bloke is yeah. doing it to a girl, there's like a mad intimidation factor. So yeah, and also the fact that everyone knows Thailand has that reputation. Yeah. So you like so they know that you've come here knowing that. What's funny is when we were in Thailand, uh, when you bounced, me, Aaron, uh, me and Aaron, we met this chick in the hostel, and we were all just chatting. And when where we was wa- she from? Uh, England. Oh, okay. When we walked to um, grab some Thai food because yep. we were eating out that night, no one touched us. Then she bounces and on the way home, we're just getting harassed left, right and center. Cause the second they see you with one chick, they're not touching you at all. Maybe it's, maybe they've got like a, a girl code. I don't think it's a girl code. I think it's that it's, I don't think, first of all, girl maybe co- they've been yelled first at of all, by Karen's. Girl co- code isn't real. Yeah. We yeah. got to that in a second, but- in, in first world countries, it certainly isn't. Yeah, no, but I think, um, I think it's more like, I don't know, you're trying to fucking sell meat to a vegan. They know you're not interested. 
Do you yeah, but if there's four guys and one girl, and you get you have three nuts to grab and you don't know whose they are, so just may as well try. Yeah, but them. like it's risking getting punched in the face. That, I think I think that's you what know, it is. I think they've been screamed at by enough Karens oh, that probably. they've just had enough. They're like, I don't even want to risk it. Well, okay, what do you think about girl code? You know, how bro code I is. Think it's cap. You don't fuck your mate's sister. You don't fuck your mate's friends. Uh, your mate's exes. That kind of shit. Like, mm-hmm. there's respect with boys there. Yeah, and I think within close friend groups there is. When it starts getting like bigger, maybe not. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of guys who like, I don't care if a girl's got a boyfriend. I'll still hit. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if it's your boy, it's a different situation. Yeah. I think girls, it is such cap. Because girls always talk about girl code. And then you always see girls like fucking going in between different guys that their friends have been talking to. And they're like bitchy about each other behind their backs and stuff like that. This is the issue. And I've had this exact conversation with a couple of girls. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Their girl code does exist, but girls fucking love drama. So yeah. that, that's the complication. So, so it does exist and it's there in the back of their mind, but they also know that, oh, this would be a fun, like this would cause some drama. And even if they uh, might not want to cause it, subconsciously, I feel like this, this will have something to talk about, you know? Imagine that, bro. What? Jesus Christ, we have a podcast and we don't even start drama for content. Fucking hell. These mm-hmm. bitches just in their regular life just would have fucking stir up something to bitch about with other people. I mean, it's definitely true. I mean, haven't you had like an ex-girlfriend or something cause a fight out of nothing because say you've had a really good like month and you haven't had an argument for a month. Yeah. I definitely feel like, and, and a lot of the times girls will admit like, oh no, I, I feel like, um, I feel like there's just been no, no passion recently. Like, like they, they enjoy the fight a little bit because it means that you're fighting for something. I think it depends on the girl. I'm not going to lie. It de- oh, hundred percent. There are some 100%. girls who like that more, but yeah, I like, I don't like, I don't like bitches like that. You know what I mean? That's I mean, it, it's vibe. nice to have some fucking, some fight, you know? I disagree. I mean, this is the thing. When the if highs are only, high, the lows are low. Yeah, but if you can only form passion through fighting, that's the issue. Uh, yeah, well, uh, well, that's a whole other thing. I don't mean only, but I mean, if you have a relationship that has high highs and low lows, those ones are probably not the best for the long run, but for the short run, they're the funnest and then the least fun, you know? No, you're right. But that's the, that's the fallacy that we all buy into, that there's only such thing as high highs and low lows. Yeah. You know what I mean? And not high highs. But then you miss the middles. highs. Yeah, but if you, if you just have a really, really low low reward but low risk relationship where you always kind no, but that's of don't my mind point. each other. We, we, only, we as people think that those are the only two exist without realizing that no, you can have ones that are mad fun and reach the high highs, but also just have a good baseline. It's not you fucking hate each other and want to kill yourself. You know what I mean? Like, So you don't think that you have to have the lows with no, highs. You can no, have highs without so. lows. 100%. I mean, maybe. It depends how you manage it, bro. It depends your relationship. If you've got like, that's why I think for all the boys out there, stay away from bitches who are mad insecure because that shit, like, that look, there is going to be insecurities for sure. But like, if you go out and your girl can't let you go out without interrogating you the next day about what you did, that's an issue. Mm. Like we just accept that girls are going to be constantly going through your phones because that's what fucking society has yeah. taught us. Yeah. But that's not normal. That shouldn't be considered normal. Like that's super Have, have you had a girl fucking look through your phone before? I'm sure, bro. I'm sure. Yeah. But it's just like, it's one of those things where we just accept it, but like why? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean- It's like, bro, if, if they can't trust you, if they can't trust that some dog shit's going to happen- I would definitely say that it's not all the girl's fault. Like a lot of the times when you have problems like that, like I've had girls really fucking scrutinize like, oh, what happened last night? Like I'm really, really insecure. But then when I look back at it, it was definitely not just their fault. Like I, I probably was not the best at communicating. Like maybe I, I stopped texting them back at midnight and I went out until I was four, until 4 a.m. Bro, I don't like, know. Like but I, they're not worried about your safety. They're trying to keep you in there. Like, do you reckon? Because no. they, they obviously say, yeah, I'm just worried about your safety. It's cap. Right. They're trying to have their face in your head at all times because they're like, oh, if he thinks about, if he stops thinking about me, then he'll just get with some other bitch. It's like, bro. It's actually the opposite that happens though. The more you want to talk to them, like the more they want to talk to you, the more you want You're to get with like, someone else. Bro, I wish, like, yeah. I wish I wasn't in this relationship. Yeah, yeah, legit. Because it's like, bro, why am I talking? Uh, I'm out with my friends. You know what I mean? I'm having a good time. Yeah. Why am yeah. I? Why do I have to text you? If it's on some safety shit, and that's why then some people might have arguments in the opposite side with girls. Because like, if a girl goes silent for like eight hours, suddenly it's like, fuck, did some shit happen here? But like, be real. Your girl's not worried that you got drugged and fucking taken back to some pl- person's house. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't what, think that's yeah. something that comes into their heads. Yeah, well, this is, I don't like to have double standards because I agree. As a guy, I have been worried for a girl uh, for go, for ex girlfriends at you know many times, 
And I, I would like to think that they've had that same thought. I don't know why, because, but you know, everyone's irrational. So uh, they can be worried and then not have anything to be worried about. You know, you can be worried about something which you shouldn't have been worried at. But I think their worry is he's cheating on me, not she's unsafe right now. Yeah. Which is the difference. Yeah. And they're, they're obviously, you know, we're capping a little bit because there are going to be guys that are getting fights all the time and a chick knows that. And she's like, fuck, is he like done some dodgy shit? Is he locked up? But like the average guy who isn't fighting every weekend and isn't like, you know, experiencing shit with the cops. I think girls are more like worried. Is he fucking cheating on me or something like that? Yeah. I mean, and the other question is, do girls want someone that's going to get in trouble? Like, you know, do girls like the fucking, like, I, Jordan Peterson has a huge fucking, um, everything he does is fucking long, but oh, does Christ. it, yeah. His fucking he, breakfast burrito order is long, mate. Yeah, legit, bro. He has like a 15, 20 minute fucking video about why girls are attracted to like vampires, pirates, um, werewolves, all that thing. Because the whole like, um, to, to put a long story short, 20 minute video in 10 seconds, essentially um, Google analysts look into what type of, things people searched and they look at what yeah. guys search, what girls search. Of course, one of those things was pornography because it was huge when the internet started. Um, guys looked at videos, girls looked at um, literature. So they looked at written porn. And then they looked at what is it that girls look at? And it was, I think it was five things. It was billionaires, vampires, uh, werewolves, pirates, and another one. But they're all that type of thing. And the whole, yeah. and the common trend with all of these is that a girl meets a guy who's, uh, you could say a monster. Like yeah. someone who's really, really rich, but is a psychopath. Like Bill or, Gates. Say again? Like Bill Gates. <laughs> yeah, but like some something like that. Yeah. But then the whole idea is that, so this guy's dangerous and they're really attracted to him and then they calm him down and they t- turn him into a, a, a normal they're guy. They're the one who changes him. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so they have, so that, that leads me to the question is, is, do they want that? Do they want a guy that they want to feel that he's not in a safe position and they want to worry about him and they want to text him all night to make sure he's okay? Even though guys, guys don't fucking want that at all. No, but the thing is, if they changed him in the first day, she wouldn't be attracted to him anymore. That's the thing. That's the like, other, And then are they attracted to the cha- are they attracted to the changed person? The same way as if you dated a party girl because you loved how outgoing she was and how she was always down to do stuff, and then you slowly got you know f- through jealousy and stuff, you stopped her from going partying. Are you still going to like her now that she's a say, a stay at home bug? Like probably not. Because that wasn't what you attra- what attracted you in the first place. Yeah, that's what always confuses me. Like when guys go after mad bubbly girls who are fucking the life of the party, love having fun, going around talking. And the second ga- they get with them, they want to put like a chain on it. It's like, bro, that's why you wanted her in the first place. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like selfish. Human eno- emotions, bro. Yeah. They're fucking scary. People be fucking bugging with that shit, bro. Like, it's, re- it's really hard to think like, what is it that I want? It's really fucking, especially if you're in a relatively okay position in life where you're like, oh, I'm not unhappy. I know that it could be better, especially with social media, putting the fucking perfect image of, of people's life right in front of you. Yeah. So you're like, I know things could be better, but I don't know how to fuck, I don't know what it is that I want. So that you just let your emotions fucking lead you the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I thought about? Yeah. You know, people always say like, women are attracted to ambitious men. Yeah. I think it's cap. Why? Because- if you think about like when you're when in every movie and every circumstance, you know, I mean, you always hear the girl say like, oh, babe, can you just put down your phone and like spend time with us and with the family? Yeah. Because he's doing his business. Yeah. Like that's pure ambition. He's sacrificing everything. And the girl's not jerking off to him, ignoring her that day. I think they're, they're, maybe, <laughs> they're attracted to the end result. I don't think they're attracted to the hustle. I don't think they're attracted to you never having time to spend with them. You like Kobe Bryant fucking being at the gym from 5 a.m. Yeah. till fucking 8 p.m. Like, yeah. I don't know a single girl who would love that. Whereas that is the ambition. Well, that's the thing. I think girls are attracted to both sides of that fucking trade-off, which is they want a guy who's going to give them attention, but then they also want a guy who's, who's hustling. But at the end of the day, both of them take up the limited time in the day. See, I, I almost don't think it is. I think it's the end result of the hustle. Yeah. So I think they say, oh, they're attracted to ambitious men. But ambition doesn't mean you're successful. Ambition means you're striving for success, right? Yeah. So there could be someone who's incredibly ambitious and takes all these stages and maybe has businesses that don't succeed, but puts in all the effort. It just, you know, the die wasn't cast his way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he grinds like he should. Bitches aren't attracted to that. They're attracted to fucking you know, Elon Musk, who's got the millions, who's got the fucking lifestyle. There's a saying I've heard, women... Uh, women don't want to don't don't look at the men who are training. They wait at the finish line and they pick the winners. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I mean that's, that's and here's the thing: 
they don't even like how many fucking billionaires get cheated on with the pool boy? Yeah. Who's got nothing. Yeah. Like, yeah. The- I, I mean, and then also are women attracted to a guy that gyms or to a guy who's fucking ripped or a guy who's fucking built? Yeah, no. Do they, do they want a guy who's exercising or a guy who's got the result from exercising? Exactly. That's the fucking question. Yeah. Right? I think that's a very, very I think fucking it's very little point. about health. Ah, do you fuck. know what I'm saying? I think if you're eating kale and eating mad protein and all that shit, that's not what they're after. They don't give a fuck about that. They just want Chris Hemsworth. However there that you happens. Go. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, I think it, it's, it's really fucking interesting to go into that because it's, I don't think that health is a good incentive for someone to work out. It's sort of like with the vaccine. If you're going to try to get someone who's kind of against it. So I've already been, I've had my first vaccine, but if you're trying to get someone who's kind of reluctant to get it, saying do it for other people is not a good incentive. Like there's got to be a reason that makes them do it. That's tangible. Something that they could feel the benefits of. Like you can go to clubs, you can go to pubs. I think we're young, so it's different. But if you've got kids and the like, people bring up the idea of herd immunity, right? Yeah. Like with normal vaccines where it's like, uh, you know, you have to get a certain amount of people vaccinated because there are some kids who are allergic to ingredients and vaccines and can't get vaccinated. And if everyone just suddenly went non-vax, they're dead. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whooping cough comes around, you're fucked. Yep. You know what I mean, I don't know if that's a yep. vaccinated thing, but you know what I'm saying? Like, you that can kind of be, thing. it's not, it's not necessary. But I think like we're thinking of clubs in terms of younger people, but I think older people, once they have kids, I think there's a whole, people always talk about like the whole dynamic changes the second you have kids, you see the world as a much scarier place and you sympathize with other people with kids. Do you know is that saying? a good thing though? Why is, is it good to protect your kids? I, I mean, there's obviously a level where it's bad to not protect your kids from that. Like you're not going to let your kids fucking sit on the edge of the balcony wall. But which level of protecting your kids does it get to where, okay, now this is counteractive. You're I, stopping him from being creative. Do you know what I want them to do? Protecting I, them from- It's so funny because we're so young and like, the thought of kids is so far away. We're not but that I, young compared to our viewers. We're, I'm, we're both 23. Yeah. I think most of our I'm viewers- I'm always 24. Are, yeah. Next week, Two I'm weeks. 24, I think. Where there is you it? Go. I mean, it's It's the, not next week, the week after, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fucking wild, bro. I'm becoming an old man, dog. Uh, I mean, I think it, it gets better as men. You know, yeah. we're, we're in the lucky position that it gets- Especially looking better women. Yeah, yeah, we <laughs> age like wine versus yeah. like milk. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, it's funny because like, Considering we're not even in the realm when we'd even think about having kids right now. Yeah. But like they, you still have opinions where you're like, yo, I do this and who knows how it holds up. But I reckon you got to have some shit where you provide them with opportunity, but you don't just coddle them. I yeah. think letting your kids win is bad. Well, this is- Even a- at young ages, I don't think it's good. I think it provides entitlement so then when they don't win, they don't have to know how to- uh, as, in, as in if you played basketball with your son, are you going to play at full strength? No, so this is what I do. Because this is what I did when my dad, when we used to play. Yeah. Um, like I played tennis a lot with my dad and I played yeah. basketball a lot with my, with my dad. It would be um, like when I was really young, my dad would spot me points. So for people who don't know tennis, you have uh, games, which they're essentially four points in a game. So it's first person to get the four. If you both have three, there's juice and you have to win two essentially, whatever. Yeah. You're not going to bore people with that. Then you have to win six games in a set. He might let me start from 30 love, which means I've got the first two points. So, so I he only needs need to get four. And I need to get two. Yeah. Right? And I did that. But I, from a very young age, I didn't want that. Because I started like, it started feeling like not a real win. If I won, I didn't win. I don't like that. No, well, exactly. But the idea was he put, uh, he put because I've got younger siblings. He gave you a handicap. He, well, he put handicaps in place where it was essentially fair for everyone based on their skill level. So if we're playing basketball, me and him might be shooting from the same position, but my little brother might be shooting from five meters in front of us because yeah. he physically can't reach it there. Yeah. And what it did was it gave my brother enough like confidence and competitiveness that he wanted to uh, compete with us. But it also meant if my dad won, it's fair. You know what yeah, I mean? It came down to okay, skill. It okay. wasn't a factor of him just being older than me. It was a factor of like, no, no, he's got more skill than he won. And it made me very competitive and I always wanted to like win those situations. And I think instilling some kind of competitive drive in your kid is essential because I think otherwise so what the fuck are they going to do in their life? You well, know? well, this is the thing. I think everyone can relate to the fact that if someone is con- significantly better than you, it's not fun. Yeah. Or, or if you're significantly better than someone else. Like think about the whole playing with your little brother at COD when they're not that good. I'm not going to lie. I would rather play someone who's significantly better than me than play against someone I'm significantly better. I don't better think at. you remember how it was like, you know, playing with someone who's significantly better. Like even in pool, I remember in Jordan, I was playing with this guy who was like the, 
he was the only, like, I was just talking to random people and this guy was like, yeah, do you want to play some games? He was like the best player in the, in the whole club. And I didn't know that until the end. And I didn't win a single point. Like he would, I would have my one. I'd maybe sink in two balls if I was lucky. And then he would get, he would clear the table. No, no, I don't need to And, and it's just, it was just not fun. I like the no, no, first no. round, second round, third run. And then it was just, Bass, it just I've stops played, being fun. You know? I've done that. I played, uh, I played snooker with a very good guy. Yeah. To the point where he's significantly better than me. But I would much rather that a million times rather than, than playing snooker with, oh, playing like with a girlfriend and it's just yeah exactly and yeah I'm just and they don't even time. know how to play with a girlfriend is different because you're you're being cheeky with them but let's say like a younger sibling who's just much worse or just a person at the bar who like can't hit the fucking ball and you're just like Jesus Christ it's boring well this is the thing this is a perfect zone where if someone's just better than you that you feel like you have enough of a chance to win them if you have a really good game then you're gonna love it. And if, if someone's just worse enough than you that if you don't fucking play it to your full potential, then he's going to beat you and then your ego's going to get in the way. That zone when you're when one person is just better than the other or like close enough, that's the perfect zone to be. So if I'm raising kids, I'm going to let, I'm going to try to make the game to be as close as 8-10. So say first to get to 10 wins, I'm going to let them get to eight before I finish it off. Because I want them to feel like they could win if they just get a little bit better. And you just you just don't ever let them get there. Occasionally you let them win, but you just keep on, you know, even if it requires you to intentionally miss a few balls. It's so funny because I'm thinking about it as me as a kid. And from a very early age, I was like, don't give me the handicap. Because if I win, I didn't win. Well, that's the thing. You don't tell them, kid. You don't tell them, oh yeah, I'm playing shit. Most people can figure it out, Baz. Uh, I don't know. Yes, you can. I don't know because it, over the space of five, 10 years, and also remember as an eight-year-old kid, you're not that smart. You think that you're fucking smart, but you you don't know what's going on in life. You don't know what your parents know. You see the other person play someone else. I saw my dad play other people in tennis. I see how good he was. I saw him play me. And I was like, well. This well is- also, so even when you had the handicap, your dad was playing at his full level. Every now and then he would. So like he, every now and then he'd do like a killer serve, which like would be like fucking Against hell. an eight-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I was eight, maybe like 10. That's still pretty fucked, bro. No, but again, it's the idea that like, t- like I, and I loved that because the idea is like, I, you don't get better by fucking beating, you, or the, the amount you gain by beating people who are slightly better than you is much less than when you're thrown in the mud and you're having to fight for yourself. I, because I you, got the, you got the option to quit or you got the option to get better. And those are the only two options. Whereas with the other one, there's like, you can think you're good and you're not really working on your craft. Cause like that led me to want to play. That led me to go practice shooting basketball. That led me to go fucking practice. Cause I was like, nah, I'm gonna get him. You know what I mean? I've only met my dad in tennis one time throughout my years of playing with him. Like over straight sets. You've been obviously. in one time, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cause we're playing like- you And play he was f- playing full, and that probably felt incredible, eh? It was amazing. I still remember it. That's Jeez. how fucking like vivid in the brain. Obviously there are other games. I played my, my dad and my brother 2v1 against basketball and I fucking washed them. You know what I mean? Like, and they're fouling like motherfuckers. Yeah. But like there are just certain games people have and tennis is a very technical game. So it's not something you can just win through being faster than someone. Um, and no, no, no. I, yeah, I think like with you just, you, you, you find out who's, who's got the fucking, who's got the sack. You find out who's about it, you know? Yeah, well, look, I definitely don't disagree with your- I'm your not about method. coddling yeah. your kids, you know what I mean? Yeah. How did we get into this topic, by the way? Who the fuck knows, bro? I have no fucking clue. Walking through a fucking <laughs> forest with dementia, you know what I mean? You start one way, you end up somewhere else. Yeah, fuck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Some, something we were talking about before, actually, is- Yeah. Um, This is actually interesting. I thought that Drake was a little bit Arabic because he's got that, he's got like that trimmed beard. Basil doesn't realize that Arabs bit off Drake's style. Well, that's, I, I'm fucking shocked that apparently that happened. No, yeah, what do you mean? Like, well, apparently he's he's just a light skin. Uh, what, what's light the, skin black guy? Yeah, yeah, light, light skin black guy. I think that's the. His mom's white. His mom's a rang. Oh, his mom's a rangle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, that's insane. It's hilarious. When you see his kid, you see it because his kid is white skin rang. It looks the same as the mom. I'm. I would. If you looked at at Drake, would you not? I feel like it's not that bad to think that he's Arab. He definitely has that look to him. He, he, no, Arabs have the Drake look. You're confusing the chicken and the egg here. <laughs> he wasn't looking back at fucking uh, Suleiman's kingdom. You know what I mean? He wasn't looking at the old Turkish guard. He fucking rocked the style. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then the Arab dude's like, I want to be like Jake, bro. Wait, when did you say Drake got big again? Because he, he's it. 34 years old and you said one particular song was kind well, of when you started from him. the bottom now we hear is one of the early ones yeah, yeah. that and people remember. that's 2013. Remember. But I'm sure he has a bunch of other shit that was beforehand that kind of brought it up. But like- he was, again, he was a guy that was in the people's household because he was like a child actor. 
Yeah. Like he, okay. he wasn't an unknown person, but he like transitioned himself into like the biggest. I mean, the fucking two albums got released. I personally reckon, cause there was a beef between kind of like Drake and Kanye. Oh yeah. Um, there was, a, there was a song where Drake said like this to lyric, uh, these lyrics where it's like, you know, took a left, took a right or some shit like that. Yeah, like, yeah. And the whole thing was people like put it together that they reckon it was like to Kanye's house where Kim K was. Oh, Essentially him trying to say shit. like, yo, I smashed out Kim K. Um, Cause like uh, Kanye and- Is Kim that, is that a, is that a fucking- it's, it's speculation, who knows? Oy. But like, I mean, yeah. But so Drake, uh, Kanye was purposely trying to time his album to release the same time as Drake because he thought he'd win. Okay. Bro, Kanye's album, I was so, uh, it was boring, bro. It was it's, just a bunch of It's tough Jesus for me shit. because I think all that music is boring. I'm not going to lie. I know it's the most popular shit out yeah. there right now. It's like fucking Beethoven back in the fucking 1700s. Yeah, bro. People but, were banging out to it though. Yeah, bro. Like that, I don't know. It was just, it was corny. There was no swear words. There. No, in the whole album. In Kanye's, yeah. Because it was what? like a Jesus-y album. There was just so much shit about Jesus. I, at the end of it, I'm like- Does he still think he's I'm like glad Jesus? glad Jesus died. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, that's what he brought me to. It wasn't like some, it was just so corny, bro. And like he, the other annoying thing was, so he had mad features on his album, right? Yeah. But like he didn't label the features, which was just so arrogant. But he didn't say featuring. No. It what? was literally just the song Kanye West. So like at some point you're like, yo, is that Jay-Z? Like what's going on here? Like you can't hear. He would have Jay Z and not feature him. Yeah, he had big ass al- a big ass artist, bro. I would feel insulted as the as That's the guy what I'm who saying. It's so arrogant, especially with Kanye's like personality. He's very up himself. You know what I mean? You like, know what's something that I fucking love, by the way. What? When big people like Skrillex or fucking who, like maybe a Drake or I don't know if Drake and fucking. Well, you try to compare Skrillex and Drake. Well, that's the thing. I know. I know they're different. Skrillex and Ant, bro. But but you can say that Skrillex is the top of his field the same way that Drake is the top of his field, even though Drake's field is way bigger. But anyway, anyway, all I'm trying to say is that like I the love the biggest it. Asian dick versus the biggest black dick. <laughs> different different things. There. <laughs> but I really like it when they feature someone who's small, and they do a banging song, and then that person just blows up, and then you go onto their YouTube and they've got 20,000 20, subscribers. Bro, on Drake their YouTube. does that. Drake does Drake he? is the kind of guy who um, Drake's so hard to. Drake's easy to hate, but then also hard to hate. He's easy to hate because he's one of those guys who like people, his fans consider him the greatest of all time. You're like, nah, you're not there yet, bruv. You know, when you haven't beat Jay, you haven't been big, you haven't beat Park, like stop it, bruv. But he then does shit like personally. Like when he gave his top fucking 10, he didn't even put himself in the conversation. Whereas guys like LeBron would put themselves and say they're the greatest. And it's would, like- Would someone put themselves in their own top 10 ranking? LeBron did. What? He said he's the greatest. He said, oh, so he said top 10 and he put himself first. Yeah. Well, he didn't say a top 10. He said, I'm the greatest. He said, that was when I became the greatest. Oh my God. It's just corny, bro. But like- I, I think that's coming as an Aussie though. I think an American mentality would, it's all about, I actually remember this. So there was an AFL interview with an American player that came to the AFL. Yeah. Um, AFL is Australian Football League, by the way, for the, um, yeah. for the non-Aussies. And um, they, they were interviewing this guy and it was an American broadcast and, and he was killing it. And they were telling him like, oh, you know, so, so how are you finding the Aussie, the Aussie rules football? And he's just like, yeah, you know, it's not bad. I'm having a lot of fun with the boys. You know, it's, it's really, really good to be a bit more physical out here. You know, um, there's a lot more violence and a lot more contact. Is this an Aussie or an American? No, an American. Player? American yeah. being interviewed. Was and it by Pat McAfee? Oh, I could have been. Yeah, it I could have been. Guy. And then they were like pressing him like, oh, so, so are, you, are you pretty good at this? And he was. And he's like, yeah, you know, not too bad. Yeah, I'm not bad. Yeah, it's, 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 it's really a team sport. And, they'll, and then they're like pushing him. So, no, but we've heard Wait, that you are-, who are you? Was, was it an Australian in, being interviewed? No, no, no. It was an American interviewed. This is fucking confusing. An American interviewer an Amer- and an American player. Yeah, an American yeah, interviewer and an American player. player's player. not that good, bro. Oh, well, apparently he, was, he, was, he killed it in that, in that game. Sure. He, he, Maybe essentially, it was yeah, yeah. they were trying to get him to say, "Yeah, I fucking killed it." Yeah, yeah, yeah. which he did. Yeah, and the, the, as hard as they pressed him, he was just like, "It's not like that over here. You can't yeah. fucking say you're good <laughs> in Australia. You're not allowed to Bro, be cocky." It's going to be so interesting because basketball is such a transient sport where it's like it's spread over so many of the world uh, over the so many of the world right now. It's it probably is going to be the next like what soccer is right now. It'll probably be soccer in the next. 50 years. Do you think so? Yeah, because China and Asia are adopting it a lot more. And China's got so many people that- it'll Does just... China watch soccer? No, no, basketball. But does China watch soccer? I don't think so. Maybe they do, but not like basketball. Isn't cricket still the biggest sport? Or is it soccer than cricket? I think soccer's definitely the biggest. Yeah. In terms of at least like the World Cup is the biggest sporting event ever. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, so I like, definitely can believe that. Like bigger than the fucking Olympics and shit. You know? Jeez. Bigger than the Olympics. 
Think about the Olympics. How interested were you? Oh, well, that was just, that was a one-off. Usually I watch it. Even still, how interested are you compared to when the World Cup's on and you're in a bar watching Australia or watching fucking Jordan or something like that if they make the, they make the cup? Like, that's yeah. the great thing about Australia. Usually we get put in groups that aren't that great so we can kind of make it to the World Cup, which it sucks to be in like Venezuela where you just never make it because you're teamed up with fucking Brazil and Argentina and like all these great teams. But like, that's fucking sad. Bro, it's depressing. Bro, hey. But like, and it's great when we have a few wins because you go to Aussie pubs and even though Australia doesn't, Australia is not a country that really fucks with soccer that much. And it's not, it's not a hugely nationalistic country where like, if you say Australia's the best and no one else can compete, fuck all you, you looked at as kind of a bogan, like relax, mate. Uh, that's so un-Australian to say that. Exactly. That's the thing. But we rep Aussies like a motherfucker. Yeah. It's weird. It's like, you yeah. can't have a fucking, you can't have the Southern cross, which is like on our flag on your arm. Otherwise you're a fucking bogan scum. Yeah. But we rep Australia hard. So when Australia is in the world cup, they are, the pubs are fucking massively packed. Yeah. Who was that indigenous MMA fighter who got really big recently? Uh, Tai Tuivasia. Yeah, I think so. He's yeah. Islander, bro. Oh, he's Islander. Yeah. yeah. Bro. He was so fucking humble, man. It was like such classic Aussie. Like you have Conor McGregor, so cocky, so fucking like so witty and all yeah. that. And this guy's just like some down to earth guy who's fucking chugging with Steve will do it. And it's just, like, could you be more Aussie than the this The funnier bloke? one is Robert Whitaker, who was a UFC champion. Oh yeah. Right. Aussie? Yeah, Aussie. And he's, he's literally even more so than that guy. He's literally just like, Oh yeah, you know, like he fought a good fight. Like, so he, he beat a guy and he's trying to get his belt back against the guy who beat him. We're actually watching the fight uh, with the guy who beat him. It was this uh, guy called Israel Adesanya, a tall, skinny black guy. We watched it in um, the Crowy. Oh yeah? Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so um, he he beat a guy and he was trying to get his belt back. So he was like, you know, trying to challenge the guy who has the belt right now. Yeah. He's like, yeah, look, Izzy's a good fighter and stuff, but you know, I reckon we got to have another crack. You know what I mean? It'll yeah. Be a fight. <laughs> and there's just no <laughs> shit talk. Whereas other people are like, yo, you're a bitch. Fuck you, man. You're the worst fighter in the world. Wait, did you see that guy telling fucking um, Khabib that he hadn't been in a street fight before? Oh, he's sunglasses. <laughs> sunglasses. You, right. you were born in America. You the funniest example, that guy's fight. called Tony Ferguson, right? He's oh, like, yeah. he's never been in a street fight. He's never been thrown into a bin before. And then fucking Khabib's like, what, street fight? Street fight? You want street fight? You can't have street fight in America. In America, there's cops. In Russia, there's no cops. <laughs> it was so funny. Then you hear about um in street in, in Russia. So he Khabib went on Mike Tyson's podcast. Fucking shout out to Mikey. Oh, Boy. did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Mike Tyson. Shout I don't know if you guys Mike have Tyson. heard of him. Pretty good boxer. He was all right. One of the top ones. Yeah, yeah. One look, of the top, at least top 10. He kind of talks like this. Um, <laughs> he's so good, right? <laughs> anyway, so he had him on and Khabib was talking about street fights and he's like, yeah, you know, if you got in a street fight, his father would be like, yo, what are you doing? And his mother would be like, if you don't win, don't come home. Who would say that? His mother to Khabib. What? If you don't win, don't come home. <laughs> to be fair, I'm sure he was a, like a prodigy at MMA as a kid. Oh yeah, no, wrestling, he was fucking insane, bro. Yeah, it, it's sort of like what we were talking about last week with the NBA. Like these people were gods when they were in high school. Yeah. So so I can understand them saying like, if, if just some random person on the street beats you, fucking don't come home to a loving mum. <laughs> bro, can you imagine this despair of like growing up in a third world country with like, there's not a chance of escaping. I've actually had conversations with people. I, I mean, if you want to get into this towards the tail of the end of the podcast, so this is going to make you feel fucking anyone wherever you are. It's going to make you feel good. So I was um I was in Jordan for three months, which is where most of my family lives. It's in the uh, like Middle East, Arabic yeah. Peninsula, yeah, Middle East, surrounded by like the fucking most dangerous countries, fucking Iraq on one side, Syria on the other, Lebanon on the other. Anyway, Egypt to the south. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so this guy was like, he's got a degree in marketing, and he was working at a bank as a teller. And he was like, he was talking to me. He didn't speak English. And he was like, I'm stuck here. I'm 24 years old, got a degree. I've done everything you're supposed to do. Um, but there's there's nothing that will come out of my life. There is 0% success chance. I will, unless I learned English and became fluent enough to leave this country, which is going to be very difficult at 24 years old. And also for people who don't know, the bank teller is the guy at the bank who yeah. you go and speak to. Yeah. This isn't a banker. Yeah. Yeah, fuck, that's crazy. Was, bro. Yeah, and and he was it was telling me, and I he, I was in his car, and I was I was just sitting there being like, that's fucking. He like the way he was saying it is like, bro, like take advantage of the fucking privilege you have as being an Aussie, an Aussie citizen because 
if you were born here and if you had the same circumstances that I have, like there's nothing you can do. How do you handle that conversation? It was an awesome, it was a really, it was like a deep conversation, like 2 a.m. But I feel like your your personality is not to like be like, damn man, that sucks. You will be like trying to figure out a way that he can do it. Well, I was How did you go about it? Well, that's the thing. He was t- like, he, he would always joke like, oh, are you going to get me an Aussie citizenship? Or are you going to get me like, are you going to get me out of here? And I was just like, yeah, I can get you out of here. Like I can help you improve your English. But at the end of the day, like you've got really broken English. You're going to have to really improve it. You're going to have to pass an English exam to become a citizen of any first world country. If you like, if you want to leave here, the ticket, the golden ticket is speaking fluent English. That's going to get you out of here. You've got the degree. You've got the fucking qualifications. You just need to have that English level of speaking because as much as country, like you have to remember, Australia fucking takes a shit ton of skilled immigrants. Yeah, no, heaps. We take fuck all unskilled immigrants. And there's definitely, there definitely is racism, but in the main capital city- It's cities, not racism. No, it's, no, it's, no well, let me explain. There is racism in Australia where people say like, oh, we don't like the fucking immigrants. But in the main capital cities, that doesn't exist. Yeah. Because like we're yeah. such Mel, I think Melbourne is the most diverse country in the uh, city in the world. The most what? Diverse city in the world. Is it? Yeah, I saw something on TikTok, so maybe it's. I wouldn't real. believe that. But like, we have so many people. So like, people who want to come, like, there's so much willing arms because we love like so much culture within Australia. But it is fucking rough because. But also, the thing is, it's fair enough for someone in a country to be like, I don't want to get an immigrant where we're going to be giving them everything and we're going to be taking nothing. It needs to be an equal exchange of anything. We should be benefiting from them if they're coming from. Jordan, where they were making a thousand dollars a month, coming here where they can now make five times that. You better have a contribution. You you better be doing something that not everyone could be doing. You know, like we I want. I disagree. We we have Chinese jip rockers because we don't want to fucking do that kind of sure. job. Do something that not everyone's going to do though. But like, it, like even if they come and they work, we're still getting tax money, so we're still benefiting from them working. Yeah, I think Australia is an interesting case because like we obviously we we're not we're for such a big amount of land we have so fucking little people. Yeah, they're like if we, we don't have that much livable land, like that much. Um, what is it? Aridable. I see is the word. People say that, and it is true in the sense that the middle of Australia is fucked. Yeah, but like there's mad area in the countryside past the Great Dividing Range, and Western Australia has got a lot of livable. Exactly, areas. people just don't want to live there. Yeah, they want to live in the cities, which is fair enough. But the idea, like, if we ever wanted as Australia to become like a serious player in the world, we're not going to get there with 25 million people. Yeah, which is not going to happen. Yeah, it's, it's- We've got less people than the UK and you could probably fit 10 UKs in Australia. I think we have a mu- The thing is about UK and the US is that almost all of it is livable. All of the UK is livable. Yeah, but all the of the climate. US. Like you drive a hundred kilometers in any direction, there's another city in the US because all of it is livable. I think the US doesn't have places that- I, I don't, Okay, I think livable is not- a, How do I- Livable this? means that you have- Summers that aren't 45 degrees every day and winters that aren't zero degrees every day. No, but they have that. Bro. Uh, they, they have it in like Arizona, Arizona yeah, Texas, Canada's freezing. The but up north, they have crazy winters. I think it's more just like people built cities there and they started living there. Whereas like, it's probably a more of a water issue. If you can't get water, that becomes an issue. But like- They also had a lot more time to do it. They've had, they've, um, they had the independence 1600s. We had our independence fucking- um, It was 1700s. I think it was 1665 or something like that. Really? Yeah. Some American would definitely confirm that. Yeah. yeah I'm not sure. Right. I'm not sure the exact year, but I'm sure they do. But also they were built up by the English before that anyway, so who knows? So were we. Yeah, but we only got in, it was only like found in the 1700s, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, I think we only got our independence in the 1900s, like 1901. Nine, like really, really, but just before World yeah, War Yeah, I. I think it might've been 1904. Something like that. Something Parker. Like Parks. we've only been independent for 120 years. Like that's fuck all. They've yeah, been independent course. for 400 years, 300 yeah, yeah, years, yeah, you yeah. know? It definitely requires more like thought. But um, yeah, no, that's, it's such a depressing thought, man, because there are some people, there are some people who have the ambition that they're going to make anything happen. Yeah. There are some people who don't. And look, it's like, obviously, you know, you can say just have more ambition, but some people are wired differently. Some people are like Kobe Bryant's who are going to get up at 5 a.m. every day and stay training till fucking 9 p.m. Yeah. And have a strict sleeping schedule. And I think you can't just expect people to just be wired that way. I think that's that's not the standard. I think that's the exception. I think that if Kobe didn't learn fucking basketball, if I think that if you put Kobe in the Amazon rainforest and gave him an ax, he would just cut every tree. He would just 
not stop cutting I, wood until he had 10 times more wood than anyone else. And then keep cutting until he had 100 times more wood than everyone else. Bro, he his, would just not stop. His transformation after the NBA was the best we'd ever seen. What do you mean? Like, so he retires. There was, I think, one year, maybe not even one full year, but one period of time where he uh, was just not doing anything. He got a bit out of shape. Someone talked shit and then suddenly got back into shape. He was fucking doing shit with his daughter, like training her up in her basketball team. He started getting, uh, doing like talk shows and podcasts. He started, he started this show with ESPN called, I forget what it's fucking called, but maybe it was called Detail or something. But it's something you have to love basketball to actually enjoy because it's a bit boring. Yeah. But I enjoyed some of them. And essentially okay. he would break down like every play that like one particular player made in a game and show like what they did and what they should have done and all this kind of stuff. And it was so technical. But he was the guy that like, he would have, if he studied business, he would have been fucking Elon Musk. Or yeah. not Elon Musk. He would have been fucking I don't Warren, know, Buffett. Warren Buffett. Yeah. If he studied science, he would have been, maybe not Einstein, but you know what I mean? He's, he's that kind of guy with hyper focus where he can fucking fixate on one thing and exp and like master and it. And he won't stop until he's got everything. But that's not everyone. Yeah. And it's, it's I don't think, I don't think human beings are so malleable that you can change your personality to that extent. And there is going to be some people who are born in a third world country who just, they don't have the same drive that someone else does, right? Just, you know, th through luck of the draw. And they're going to be stuck working in the same fucking minimar or whatever, or taxi driver that their father did and their father's father did and their father's father did. There's no thought. It just takes anything. one person to get that, that's to break Bro, that it's cycle. it's crazy. Well, also here's, here's another thought actually. There's, whenever you have a society and you say you have people that are cavemen and then everyone's pretty much equal as a caveman. And then as soon as you have a society where things, where trade exists, and then suddenly you have services being traded, say like, okay, you cook the food and I'll go hunt it. Yeah. You're suddenly gonna have inequality. You're gonna have someone who does not stop hunting yeah. until he hunts for everyone in the crowd and then he gets them all to do something in, in exchange. And then that guy's gonna have way more than everyone else. Yeah, I mean, capitalism is innately well, I don't unequal. Think it's, I don't think it's capitalism. I think it's universal that inequality will happen because there will be someone who's willing to work Non-stop, but, and and but, will not be up to sleep until he that does. That doesn't that doesn't matter in a communist regime where it doesn't matter the actual. It's only when you get rewarded for the output you put in, or the I, input. I even put. think in a communist regime, I don't. I would be surprised that if North if in North Korea people aren't doing under the table trades like oh I've got a bit of extra you know capitalism that is and, and stuff here. That is innately capitalist. That isn't communist. Do you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like yeah. the idea of capitalism is you're worth what you can produce. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's a, the market decides, so you're yeah. able to- And profit is okay. Like you, you're allowed to profit, you're yeah, allowed exactly. to trade. Which is crazy because it's like, you know, you pro, you breed all this in, uh, inequity, but fuck me, it's better than communism, bro. It's better than having no reason to work hard. Well, the whole idea was that you don't work, don't don't ask what you can, what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Like your goal is to make Australia better. I don't think that's what, I, isn't that what fucking- Bush, not Bush, uh, JFK said? Yeah. yeah it's it not is. communism. Right? It isn't, but you can use it for communism. Right. You have exposed me. You can use <laughs> JFK who fought against communism for communism. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny that you, yeah. you knew exactly where that was from. Yeah, let's end this on a positive note. Not oh, yeah? positive for the guy involved, but anyway. Yeah. I saw a YouTube ad oh, this yeah? week. It yeah. was the funniest ad I've ever seen. I can hate YouTube ads. Oh, bro, this was great. I would have watched it a million times. I watched it the full way through. It was like one minute ad. You know I mean? That shows how good the pro not product, <laughs> but the ad was. It was a ma it was a camera facing a man and a woman. They were obviously a couple. Now the woman was talking to the camera while the man was just kind of staring there, like you know, doing a half smile every now and then, looking at his wife. The woman full was even had her legs crossed and had her hand on the man's lap. You know what I mean? As she was talking, and the ad is for. Uh, Erectile dysfunction medication, yep. right? Yep. And it's the <laughs> woman talking about- product. It's the woman talking about, yeah, you know, it was great. We had a great relationship. And then all of a sudden, Harry here, you know, there were just times he couldn't perform. Oh. And you know, it was putting a lot of stress, stress upon him and our relationship. And that's when we found, insert name of fucking, Bluetooth. Yeah. The one you're gonna use. <laughs> but it, it, what she was saying wasn't funny. It was his reaction. 
It was her hand on his face, and every now and then he's kind of doing this half. Her smile. hand on her on his face. No, no, her hand on his lap. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. But his face. Every now and then he'd like you know look at her and do like a half smile. He didn't say a word one time. I was oh. waiting for him to say like yeah you know really improved my confidence. He didn't say he a single word. There, the entire talking. minute and a half ad, and his eyes didn't <laughs> blink once, and you could see they started to Pain. water. Because this guy wants to kill himself that second. Oh, She's obviously man. been like, no, honey, we'll get so much money for this ad. It'll be great. And he's like, but babe, I don't want this to be out there. You know what I mean? This is kind of like- Do private. you reckon it's true? Do you reckon there's someone who's fucking- They've you know gotten what? a great review and have you reached know out to him? Yes, it is. <laughs> don't want to hear anything else. Yes, it is. And if I saw this guy, Harry, if you're out there, mate, <laughs> have you killed yourself yet? Because if I was you, I would have hung myself while the camera was rolling. And then they said, we're going to put all the ad spend on this fucking ad. And now you're the face of this erectile dysfunction Bro, bill. I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> it was the funniest thing I'd ever seen. It was retarded. Just oh, watching, his, watching her talk so seriously about this such intimate problem and him just wanting to die. That's such <laughs> He's joke, like man. doing that thing. You know, as a kid, you're like, you know, you like raise your hand up and pretend like you're thinking like, yo, I think I could blow up that car if I focus my head straight yeah, up. Yeah. He's doing that, but he's thinking, if I want to die hard enough, my head will explode. <laughs> and it didn't, Harry. I'm sorry. You almost <laughs> cried on TV and I saw your ad and I laughed a lot. Oh. So I really appreciate that for you, mate. And, Bruce, uh, I mean, speaking of ads, um, wait, was there anything else you wanted to no, add? No, no, no. no Bro, I was about to, have you guys noticed that fucking Instagram has been giving two ads consecutively? Instagram. Yeah. You know, on, on stories, how you get an ad every single three stories you click? No, I didn't know that. Okay, okay. Well, so every single time, if you guys haven't noticed this, bro, this is fucking every th single three stories, even if it's on the same person, like every single time you click, every time there's three clicks, there's an ad. Oh, I don't get that. That, used to, that used to be the way it is. I've never had that. What do you mean? You don't get ads on Instagram stories? Not on three clicks with the same person. We'll go on your Instagram now. You probably haven't noticed, but every single three clicks, or oh, it's every four clicks, one of the two. Now they started having two ads consecutively. It's fucked. Bro, it's like when YouTube changed from one to two. Yeah. That was the biggest fucking outrage that's ever happened in this world, bro. Yeah, man. Is it is it giving you two, three? Three, four. No. What? When I changed it. And then, then, then when you change story, then the next one's an ad. Yeah, when you change story, not yeah. in the middle. But that's the thing is, if you only had clicked one of them and then you went to the next story, there wouldn't have been an ad there. I just got two ads. You're right. Yeah. Have you not noticed that's this? That's disrespectful. Bro, it's been for the last no, three days. No, because or four you know days. why? I haven't been. I, I don't click consecutive ads anymore. I, like, I'll just see the the fit chick where I want to see the story and click on that. Wait, what do you mean? You know, like back in the day, you might have clicked on stories and just like scrolled through all the stories for a while. Yeah, I don't do that ever now. Oh, so you just click I'm one story selected. and then you cancel it? Like, I'll no. It'll be like you see the bubbles and I'll see the hot chick and she might be third in row and I'll just click on hers. Are you sure you'll swipe through the stories? You see who you want to no, look at. No, it's only the people that are there. Yeah. I'm a big fan of stories. I enjoy that more than I enjoy the posts because the posts are so fake. The stories are just like what you actually did in that day. Yeah, I don't really use Instagram anymore. I'm not going to lie. It is interesting how social media has changed so much. Like how it went from MySpace to Facebook to now Instagram. And then it's like, what's next? And Facebook was like the biggest now thing TikTok. for a while. I guess TikTok is next. That's what everyone's wasting their time with. I wonder if it is. Like social media has kind of died. Like we- we've realized that our friends are kind of boring and that these celebrities are fucking fake and that's not their real life. So now it's like, all right, let's just watch other people make funny content. Yeah. I think it's very easy to waste time in that. That's a, yeah, and their, yeah. their algorithm is amazing. It's incredible. That's the thing. It's it is like such a fascinating props to algorithm. them. They're fucking, we've never been even close to figuring it out and we wish we could. I feel like ad agencies should take some fucking advice from them. because. Should? ad agencies or like yeah. ad companies advertising because TikTok doesn't berate you with the same fucking five things over and over again. It gives yeah. you new shit and you get engaged. That's the thing. Whereas like- It with moves an ad, on from-, from You look at one quick. thing and suddenly you're getting all the ads are for this one thing and yeah. you're like, you get to the point where you're like, fuck you, I'm not going to buy it now, you yeah. cunt. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Whereas like they don't ever spice shit up. You know what I mean? They don't like, they're not creative. They just say, well, he, what, he looked at this once, therefore he wants this. Like, bro, I don't need a double-ended dildo anymore. I already bought one, relax. <laughs> I think an even bigger case can be made for is paid ads as effective as organic reach? Like if no, you just no make way. stuff like TikToks, you make stuff like posts and you just grow a big social media account. I feel like that's going to be 10 times better. An authentic social media account which just shows your product out there versus advertising it for people. I, I'm curious about this, right? You know how TikTok and YouTube, they both have things where it says this includes paid promotion. Mm -hmm. Like TikTok, it says promotion at the bottom. YouTube, as I said, this sponsored, yeah. Promotion. Yeah. 
with TikToks, if because I'm assuming there's a legal thing that they have to show that, right? Yeah, It'll of just course, yeah. that. I wonder if if it was if it wasn't like that, if they didn't have to click promotion, would they sell more products? Because the second I see promotion, I swipe. I don't even think of it. I was like, I don't care because you're just yeah. trying to sell me something. But if it's an organic video and you make it funny and you happen to have a product, maybe I'm more interested. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and you then know, there's products that go viral and then before you know it, everyone has it. Like yeah. that fucking toy that you flip upside down, it's a happy face. Then you flip it out the other way around and it's a sad face. Yeah, exactly. I feel like that little bit can turn people off because people don't like being sold to. Mm -hmm. People like thinking they make their own decision, exactly. even though they never do, let's yeah. be real. Yeah, yeah. But when some, that's why people hate door-to-door -door salesmen and like tele, uh, like telecalls. Tele yeah, yeah tele -sales. Tele -sales. Because we know what you're doing. Yeah. Whereas if you can just, you know, if you get convinced yourself, even if the other person is giving you the, you know, leading you along the track to, yeah. to buy the thing well, you the, want. That's the whole idea is that a good salesman will make you think that it was your idea. That's even why, though he was the one who called you. That's why I would always, um, I, I sold coffee machines in like quite an expensive area in uh, Sydney for a while. And a lot of times I would say like, oh yeah, you know, the base, uh, the, the, the top models obviously, you know, quite expensive. It's only for, you know, really coffee enthusiasts, I guess. Uh, but, you know, we've got this model and I would always show them the cheaper model, which is still 600 bucks. But there were these people who would almost like feel, you know, insecure that I'm just assuming that they can't afford to buy the expensive model. And they'd buy it? Yeah, I like, got mad sales from that. No way, well, how, how did you tell them? Well, I'd sorry, I'd say like, oh, I'd t this is what I'd do because I, I had the expensive model set up to to make coffees and give demonstrations, right? But I would start by showing them some of the cheaper ones, you know what I mean? Like, oh, this is good, you know what I mean? You do have to tamp it yourself, you do have to do this. And I show the products, and then when I say, oh, do you want a coffee to try and sample it? I bring them around and say, oh, you know, this is a, this is a top model and stuff like that. Um, and then I make them the coffee, I'm like, oh, you know, it is quite good, you know, you just, uh, you weave it in kind of casually, like, you know, you just press a button and it grinds it for you and stuff and it tamps it, all that kind of stuff. And they're kind of like, so how much is this one? And you're like, oh, you know, it's this amount of money. But you like glaze over that and they start thinking in their head, I'm like, I, I can ask. I mean, they, they usually do quite good deals around here. I can ask one of the staff to see what the best price is. And a lot of them would be like, like yeah, go go see what, what the best price is. Cause they, the, the coffee was really good. So the product Jeez. held up and I presented the other products in a way that it was good, but you know, there were a few inconveniences and this fixed all the That's inconveniences. That's genius. Whereas yeah. if you started by selling the base model, they would see the price and think it's too expensive. Yeah, yeah. And then you'd you'd end up selling them the, the cheaper model. Yeah. Because at the start, I realized like, oh, I could sell these cheaper models and hit my targets pretty easy by just like starting with the big one and then moving down. And I'm like, you don't get as much money. You get like two dollars for a fucking commission if you sell a bullshit one. Yeah. You get fifty if you sell the big one. Jeez. So I was like, all right, how can we do the reverse? That's fucking, that fucking genius. Yeah. It shows that the power of people's impulses. Like if they've gone in saying, I'm buying a coffee machine today and they haven't thought about budget, they haven't done much research, then it's so up to the salesperson to fucking pitch them whatever they want. My best sale, the one I was most proud of was, it was actually my first uh, first sale ever. Yeah. It was a guy came in wanting to buy a flat screen TV because he just got his fucking disability check or some shit like that. Oh, fuck like yeah. Like a payment but he was dead set on the TV and he was talking to him. I'm like, oh, do you want some coffee? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm just coming in. I've been excited. I've been like wanting this TV for a, a long time. Fuck I think yeah. Like, oh, and I managed to sell him on the fucking thing. And uh, and he was so happy about it as well. It wasn't like, it didn't feel like a dirty sale where he, um, you know, like I swindled him out of something. It felt like I provided a, a alternative product he liked. So I felt like yeah. good on that regard. And it was the first one of these machines because they sold for like three racks. Jeez. They were expensive machines. But- it was the first one this this store had sold in like six months. And so much to the point where the manager came up and gave me a hug afterwards. What? Yeah. Dude. Like, fight, no, she, yeah, but they're like, finally. What? Yeah. That's insane. Bro, that's a fucking cool. But I was like, ew. One. And then right after that, I moved to a rich area and I sold like six on my first day. And I'm like, this is Six bullshit, on your bro. first day. Yeah, because it's other places in Chatswood and you know the demographic of Chatswood. There's yeah. a lot more stingy people, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, fucking good. Because you know, a lot of here. apartments, all that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> that's your apartments, like, that's uh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, apartment doors, you know what I mean? They're not going to buy a $3,000 coffee machine. Sure. But anyway, so, you know, you just have people not even looking your way. And I yeah. spent like a month trying to sell and not getting anywhere. Uh, I heard about this case study of coffee in Japan where they didn't know about, like coffee wasn't a thing, right? And it got to the point where uh, this coffee manufacturer was like, well, okay, how can we like penetrate this market? 
So they created these little candies which had a chocolate, uh, a coffee flavor, right? Yeah. And they put it in. Uh, they put it into the Japanese market, and then people started liking it. They started buying and it, then and they the did coffee. it so they can introduce coffee. Yeah. And and now there's Starbucks is everywhere and stuff like that, but the coffee is shit in Japan. Jeez. It's fucking horrible. I can imagine it's just that like nasty, really sweet, like frappe type yeah, coffee. Yeah, it's uh, it's just they've got a lot of black coffee, but just like. Not like horrible beans, you know oh, what I mean? It's all about the beans. That's the thing. It is. It's all about the beans. But now that it's in the thing where there's coffee machines in every 7-Eleven, there's fucking Starbucks all over the place. And you actually see locals in there. Because that was the interesting part. Like when I would walk into it, I'm like, all right, how many tourists are in this yeah. versus locals? Because I hate Starbucks coffee, but I wanted to have a coffee when I'm going around, right? And you see a lot of Japanese people in there. So you're like, oh, you it is like starting to catch on. And that's when you start thinking like, yo, someone's going to come in with decent coffee and they're going to fucking own the market. Legit. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting one. Legit. Anyway, we've uh, we've gone a bit over. So let's fucking, let's wrap this bitch up right now. Yeah, I reckon sweet. secret word, what should we do? Flopsy. Shot sure. hard. Yeah. Flaccid. <laughs> Floppy. <laughs> let's go flaccid. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> try, try to make flaccid into a, into poor, a sentence. Poor like Harry. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sucks to be Harry, bro. Yeah. And thanks so much for watching it to the end, boys. Really. Thanks so much, lads. Love your support. Um, some big TikToks are coming up. We had yes, one sir. that did relatively well last week. So yes, that's sir. fucking, the motivation is doing fucking well, boys. We got another six fucking exclusive TikToks coming out this week. Hey. Not part of the main podcast. So you make sure you listen to, to make sure you get all the exclusive content we're yeah. going to produce. And if you could leave a comment on the TikToks, I have a feeling that, that really helps with the algorithm. So I, yeah. I don't know how many people are going to listen to this. Maybe we'll put it on the Discord. Um, check the Discord out, by the way. Um, but yeah, we would really appreciate if you could just comment on the on the TikToks when you see them because that really helps with growth. Yeah, exactly. You know, we're just trying to grow this bitch to the next level and uh, yeah, that's that's what we're, to, we're trying to do, I guess. So make sure you click the Discord link down below. You can join the community. I think we're at 95 people right now. Over so 100. Shit. Is it over 100? Over 100. Aaron told yep. me 95 yesterday. No, it's over 100. Damn, Hurry we're growing like a motherfucker. Yeah. Anyway, come. I think there's like, what is it? A 100,000 limit? Yeah, um, no, I think 800,000 limit. It'll be sold out soon, so get in now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only 799,000 more people. Uh, you know, that's 900. two weeks time, two weeks time. Come quick, you know what I'm saying? Uh, hit up the Instagram. We'll be posting the Q&A in the next week, so make sure you're there to be able to participate in that. Uh, give us a five-star review on Apple and Google Podcasts. Um, if you join the Discord, Baz actually sent a link there, so it makes it a bit easier to understand how to do it. Um, yeah, fucking, I don't know. What else yeah, the there? boys. See you guys next week. Yes, sir. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye.